Hi quilters! Welcome to our first video in a new series of projects using 5 inch squares or charm packs. We're going to use a free pattern from Moda called Moda Love Charm Quilt. For one of my samples, I'm using a Land of Enchantment charm pack with two cording fabrics for background and binding. Stay to the end of the video to see all three versions I made to try out the pattern. You will need three quarters of a yard of background fabric. From the background fabric, cut four strips that are five inches by the width of fabric and one strip that is four and a half inches by the width of fabric. You could also use a charm pack of a solid white fabric instead of yardage. From the five inch strips of fabric, subcut 18 squares that are five inches by five inches. I like to stack my strips so that I can cut multiple squares at one time. With two strips in each stack, I can cut eight squares per cut. Once you've trimmed up the ends, cut at the 10 inch mark and the five inch mark, and then remove three of the four strips. Right now you have 16 squares and you need 18. So on that last strip, cut two more five inch squares for a total of 18 squares five inches by five inches. Cut two of the leftover five inch strips down to four and a half inches wide. From these two strips and the four and a half inch by width of fabric strip, cut 16 squares that are four and a half inches by four and a half inches. I decided to start this new video series because I love buying charm packs and I have a big collection that I need to start using before it gets totally out of control. And I know I'm not the only one who loves charm packs. After the video is over, check our description below for a link to our playlist of charm pack projects. From the binding fabric, cut four strips that are two and a half inches by the width of fabric. You will sew these end to end to make the binding. If you use a large square to cut your binding strips, you can cut at the 10 inch mark, the seven and a half inch mark, the five inch mark, and the two and a half inch mark. A link in the video description below will take you right to the pattern. On the second page of the pattern, there is a blank diagram of the quilt top to use as a coloring sheet to help you figure out how to lay out the colors in your quilt top. I found this to be very handy. Sort out the fabrics in your charm pack to figure out what kind of colors you have and how many of each color you have. I printed out the coloring sheet and then found colored pencils that match the colors of my charm pack. You could also use crayons or markers to fill in your coloring page. A charm square combined with a background charm square will make two half square triangle units. I have four sets of duplicates in my charm pack. I'm going to use those to make the arrows that point to the sides of the quilt. As I pick out the charm pieces and where I want to put them in the quilt top, I'm going to color in the placement on my coloring sheet. Once I have it all figured out, I have a little more cutting to do and then it's time to sew. From the charm pack, you need to select 18 squares to make half square triangle blocks. Set them aside with the 18 background squares that are five inches by five inches. You also need to pick out 12 squares to be used in the quilt top. Trim them to measure four and a half inches by four and a half inches. The directions for piecing the quilt top in this video will be different than the printed directions. I figured out a way to switch up the directions just a little bit in the construction to make it a little bit easier. The pattern directions advise you to sew the squares into eight rows and then sew the rows together to make the quilt top. My suggestion is to sew nine separate sections, four corner squares, one center square, and four side rectangles. The four corners are exactly the same, except they will be different colors. It will be the same for the four rectangle units. Now it's time to start sewing. On the wrong side of the 18 five inch background squares, draw a line corner to corner. With the right sides together, layer a background square with a charm square and sew a quarter inch away from that center line on both sides of the line. 
If you don't want to draw the line, you can always use diagonal seam tape to help you sew these seams. You should be able to find diagonal seam tape at your local quilt shop or check our link below. It is well worth the investment. Send all 18 sets through the machine and then cut them apart and then sew a quarter inch away on the other side of the line. Once you've sewn on both sides of the diagonal line, it'll be time to cut on the diagonal line. You can do this with a pair of scissors or with your rotary cutter. There are a total of 36 half square triangle blocks. Once they're all cut apart, it's time to press. For all of these, you will press towards the charm square. I try to lay the pieces on the ironing board background side down. That way, when I pick them up, they're already positioned correctly to press towards the dark fabric. I also try to sort them by color as I'm pressing them. Once the half square triangle blocks are pressed, it's time to trim them to size. Trim each of the blocks to measure four and a half inches by four and a half inches. My favorite ruler to use for this is the block lock ruler. It has the groove in the back that locks onto the seam and helps make trimming these squares easy. If you don't have a block lock ruler, any square ruler with a diagonal line to follow will work. For the rest of the piecing, we're going to sew all the seams with a quarter inch seam allowance. And from here on out, press all seams open. This will help reduce bulk at the corners and help the quilt top lay nice and flat. Now it's time to combine all the background squares, charm squares, and half square triangle blocks and sort them into the sections that need to be made. Pinning them together with my chart pieces helps prevent me from sewing the wrong pieces together. Plus, if I have to leave the project or put it away at any point, I can pick it back up where I left off without any trouble. Now I can pick up one section at a time and sew it together. Each of the corner blocks is three rows of three squares. I don't know if you like charm packs as much as I do, but I'm going to give you four reasons why I love them. First reason, they're pre-cut. So for certain patterns, it saves a lot of time. You don't have to start with cutting. You can just go right to the sewing. Two, they're a good value. When you really like a line of fabric, but you don't want to buy yardage of it and spend a lot of money, you can get a little bit of each fabric by getting a charm pack. Three, they're a great way to preview fabrics to decide what yardage you want. So you can take it home, open it up, look at all the fabrics, and decide which of the pieces you want to get more of. Four, they're just fun to collect, display, and they're pretty. In the comment section below, let us know if you buy charm packs and what kind of charm packs you like. We're always interested in knowing what kinds of things are interesting to you. In this new series that's all about charm packs, we're going to have a variety of projects. We'll have large quilts and small quilts, some table runners and toppers, bags, and who knows what else we'll come up with. Our goal is to do one video a month using charm squares, either one charm pack or two charm packs or multiple charm packs. For some of the projects, we will have kits to match the project that I make in the video. To purchase the kit, just look for the link in the description below the video. Kits and charm packs will be available while supplies last. If the pattern is a free pattern or a pattern to purchase, those links will also be in the video description. Remember that for the rest of the quilt top, we are going to press our seams open. When I was putting the rows together, I did pin to make sure that my corners matched up perfectly. Once I had all the rows of the section sewn together, I pinned my diagram back to the section, pressed the seams open, and made the other three corners the same way. I will also sew the center square and the rectangle pieces in the same manner.
Once I had all the sections sewn, I could follow my colored diagram and lay out the quilt top into three rows. Sew the rows one at a time and press. Two more seams and the quilt top is finished. Sew the rows together and press the seams open. Layer your quilt top with batting and backing and use your preferred basting method to hold the layers together. I like to use 505 basting spray to hold my layers together. I've been using it for years and can't think of using anything else. I usually add a pin in each of the corners to prevent me from picking it up wrong and separating out the layers. Now you can quilt it any way you like. I quilted this version on my regular sewing machine. I used my walking foot and then I just used a serpentine stitch and followed the seam lines. I followed all the straight lines across the top, side to side in both directions. Then I followed all the diagonal lines. The thread I used for quilting was just a cotton thread in the same color as the background fabric. Once the quilting is done, trim the batting and backing flush with the edge of the quilt and attach the binding. For this quilt, I put the binding on the back side, flipped around to the front and top stitched it into place with matching thread. When I'm machine quilting and binding, I like to wear my grippy gloves that helps give me better control of where the fabric is going. For the top stitching, I use my open toe foot so I can see exactly where my stitches are going. The quilt you've seen so far in this video was my third time making this quilt. For my second variation of the quilt, I used a charm pack I'd had for a while called Sundance by Crystal Manning. I quilted that version in a grid pattern by following the markings on the backing fabric, basically just quilting it upside down. It's so easy with the right fabric and looks fantastic. 
It's one of my favorite ways to quilt small quilts or runners. All I did was follow the pink lines and just sew in a straight line. For the binding fabric, I used one of the new AGF binding fabrics. It matched the fabric in the quilt top and gave me two choices for which fabric would show up once I put it on the quilt. I chose to have the stripe fabric showing. For this quilt, I sewed the binding fabric to the front side, flipped it to the back side, and then top stitch it from the front to catch the edge of the binding on the back side. You can hardly tell from the front that I didn't hand stitch it on the back side. I think this is probably my favorite way to do binding. I really loved using this charm pack and I think it turned out beautiful. It's a great pattern for almost any charm pack. The first time I made this quilt, I used scraps left over from other projects for all of it. Leftover five inch squares for the big pieces and the half square triangle units and the background squares were actually made from four two and a half inch squares of white fabric sewn together to make a four and a half inch square. I had a lot of fun going through my scrap buckets, trying to find fabrics that would all look good together. This was the first time I had made the pattern, so I did follow the directions and make the eight rows of eight blocks, which made me want to switch it and do quadrants instead of rows, just because I had to get my seam ripper out a couple times because I kept flipping things upside down. I also wanted to make this one a little bit bigger by adding some borders, but not big chunks of fabric for a border. I wanted to use my two and a half inch strips to make strip sets and cut them into four and a half inch sections and make a piano key border. These strips are from my strip bucket that I've been trying to use up. It was a great way to find another use for my two and a half inch strips. Piano key borders are an easy way to make quilts bigger. This quilt went from being 32 inches by 32 inches to being 52 inches by 52 inches. I wanted it to end up being a square baby size quilt. If I'd wanted to make this a rectangular quilt instead of a square quilt, I could have just added the second set of piano keys on the top and bottom of the quilt to make it end up measuring 44 inches by 52 inches.
Once the quilt top was finished, I picked out a cuddle fabric for the backing and used my long arm quilting machine to finish it in a small loop design using white thread. All three of the quilts were quilted with either warm and natural batting or warm and white batting. The binding for this quilt came out of my strip bucket. Now that all three of my quilts are done, I can add my leftover charms from the first two quilts into my five inch square scrap bin and start planning my next charm pack project video. Thanks for watching and happy quilting!